You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. Hey, everybody, I want to take a few minutes here and talk about our sponsor, Splunk. You know, you need to keep operations humming around the clock, but potential disruptions are everywhere. Splunk helps you predict problems and find and fix issues fast so you can reduce risk and ditch downtime. The world's largest enterprises rely on Splunk's unified security and observability platform to become more efficient, resilient, and innovative. With Splunk, you can react quickly, evolve faster, and be ready for anything. Stay ahead of disruptions. Learn more at splunk.com slash resilience. My name is Jennifer Walsmith. I'm the Vice President for Cyber and Information Solutions within Mission Systems, Northrop Grumman. I actually thought I wanted to be a vet when I grew up. But when I reflect, I really worked very closely with my father, and he was a big part of my life. He was a electrical engineer, and I helped him as his somewhat son outside of the house doing everything from rewiring, building, anything that he needed done, I learned in his shadow. He worked for NSA, and ultimately, I followed in his footsteps to NSA. Not exactly in the path that he wanted me to take, but ultimately, he was a huge influence. When my siblings, who are both older than I, knew my father, he worked in a candy store, according to him, and he had business cards and so forth. That's how secretive NSA was in the times that they were growing up. That gradually changed. And I joined NSA in 1982. It still was not an openly acknowledged agency. In fact, it was no such agency. But in my journey, they changed. And and they became an organization that was more transparent, with the nation on what they were doing and their role. And uh, it's one that I grew to understand from two lenses. I was one of only three public figures at NSA in my job as the senior acquisition executive for over 10 years. And so I had the opportunity to balance both of those equities and it was a fascinating journey. NSA actually came to my high school, and I, unbeknownst to my parents, I took the battery testing that they would go out to the various local high schools, and I scored very well, and they offered me a job. My parents wanted me to go to college, but I was quite a challenging uh, teenager, and I said, no, I'm going to work. I was hired as a data entry operator, but quickly was fortunate to actually work in the field of computer systems analyst. I quickly realized that this college degree was a very important thing. In parallel with starting at NSA, they convinced me to enroll at the community college as a night school student. And so I did both of those things. Ultimately, NSA supported me to finish my college career at UMBC as a computer science major. The agency had a rich history of supporting women. If you look at the Cryptologic Museum, you'll see a lot of history about women. Nonetheless, it was still challenging. And I really thought I would become an electrical engineer, just like my father. But he saw women struggle. What he said was, why not try this new emerging field called computer science? And so you can be part of the group that pioneer this field. And that is ultimately what I did.
I think it remained challenging uh, in the 80s and even in the 90s. When I became a senior executive at NSA, and there weren't women senior executives that had children. While there were many seniors that had been successful, they had to give up their opportunity in motherhood. What I pioneered with those around me and a tremendous support network was that I could do both. I could be a mother with two children I was raising and yet still have a successful career. And having the courage to say, no, I, I'm room parent today and, and I need to leave. But still meeting the responsibilities that I had by having others support me. It wasn't until much later, close to my retirement, that I had so many women come to me and say, you showed me we could do this. And I didn't even realize it. And so that, that, that's very um, nostalgic for me because I didn't set forth to have that impact. It did take bravery and it did have a few arrows in my back, but I would say really not that many. It was about making sure we served the mission but also supported one another in having lives beyond the mission. So it was retirement, and I had the wonderful opportunity to join a company that had a lot of similar values to that which I had, and that was tremendous technical acumen, deep commitment to diversity, diversity of thought, diversity of ideas. When I think of the ideas that we set forth, such as we're pioneers, we define possible, we promote and inspire inclusion and diversity of thought. That's exactly what I hired on for. I, I run a business which we have a set of financial numbers that we have to achieve. But what I do more of is orchestrating and inspiring teams. The heart of my job is helping them uh, define possible where they sometimes think they can't. Be bold, embrace failure, never stop learning. And we're all leaders, whether it's your first day out of college whether it's 10 years into your career, or whether it's one day before retirement. Regardless of your job title, we are all leaders. That's what will help us keep our nation safe, especially in a field of cyber, where if we don't pioneer, if we don't continue to define possible, we will not be successful against our adversaries. That's my advice. And now, a word from our sponsor, SpyCloud, the cybercrime analytics leader. SpyCloud disrupts cybercrime by telling you what criminals know about your business and your customers, so you can take action to prevent ransomware, session hijacking, account takeover, and online fraud. SpyCloud constantly recaptures and analyzes new data from the criminal underground, including credentials, session cookies, and PII siphoned from malware-infected devices. With knowledge of the specific exposed data criminals have in hand from InfoStealer malware on managed and unmanaged devices, security teams can respond with a more efficient and effective process called post-infection remediation that fits seamlessly into existing incident response frameworks. Get SpyCloud's post-infection remediation guide outlining the seven steps for preventing a malware infection from becoming a full-blown ransomware incident. Visit spycloud.com slash cyberwire. That's spycloud.com slash cyberwire. And we thank SpyCloud for sponsoring our show. <laughs> <laughs> 